it's time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We're about to play, um, g resume Zyto Leg, the second portion, the second leg of the Zyto Leg of uh, the mixture game of Chrononauts and U.S. Patent Number One, uh, called the First United States of American Chrononaut. I think that's what we're calling it. Um, I, I'm starting a little delayed. Uh, my, my son's been napping for a while, and that's because of Mushmau here. This is the most wonderful man in the world, and he very rarely wants to sit on the couch, but he really wanted to sit on the couch with me. And so I've been petting him. Um, and really, that's kind of superfluous to the game, except to say that it might be an abbreviated session. Really, though, I just wanted to, to share him with you. Um, he, he keeps his splendor hidden. Uh, most of the time. He's very shy when it comes to other humans. Um, we, we bonded at a young age, however, and so, and so he, he, does, um, he does deign to let me rub him quite a lot. Uh, he's great though. I, I don't know if that really translates to the camera or not. You really, I, I can't tell. Um, and I'm so biased. You know, it's like if I look at the sun for too long can I tell where you're even looking or what you can see? I don't think so. But I can tell you a little bit about the game. Um, it's fun and I want to go back and play it, but it's really hard for me to pull myself away from Mushmel right now. So it could be that this video is just like a turn or two turns or it might be several turns. Um, my son is sick so he could sleep more today, I don't know. He might also sleep less sometimes when you're feverish it's difficult to rest. Um, but Marshmallow has no problem resting. He sure does love to sleep. It's so hard to pull away. Uh, here we are now with uh, the setup. Let's see. Where is everyone in time? It's been a few days. I was sick over the weekend. I had hand, foot, and mouth disease. I, did, I think I did some filming with that, actually. Um, so here we have Oblio, far in the past. He's kind of an island unto himself. He has all these cards turned upside down. This is a hard part about coming back after a while. I don't remember which ones he's aware of their contents and which ones he's not. Uh, that could be trouble. Um, everyone else is kind of messing around in the future. Um, I really don't quite remember exactly what's going on. I'll have to have a thought and come back with, um, I think, I think we ended at the, at the end of a turn, so I think we'll come back with our drafting. People are moving around in time. We finished the turn. Uh, everyone except for Oblio got a card in the initial draft. He managed to move up here. He's leaving the deep pass now after putting down his investment token. So he got an antique in 1814. 1814's a popular year. Um, DJ Double J also has an antique from 1814. She's moving towards the future, so she presumably could cash in on that pretty soon. I mean, there's no sense in really holding it. It doesn't actually appreciate uh, over time in terms of how long you hold it, rather, in time in terms of how far into the future you get. Uh, what else happened? Um, not a lot. A fairly quiet turn. A lot of people were doing hypothesizing, trying to get the patches they need. No one's picked up any, um, any upgrades this turn which is very different from the last couple turns. Um, and Desi let, let up on uh, TD. He didn't attack him again. Instead, he just stood there and did some hypothesizing. Sadly, because he just stood there, we don't get to move the time traveling mechanic. The mechanic's just going to stay there because Desi is um, in the middle point in between the number of people in play. So, sorry. So DJ Double J just got her first, the first antique sale of the game, so that's going to remove this marker here. And I just had an idea for um, how antiquing could work instead of just having it be a flat rate. And I don't know, this might be too unbalancing, I'm not sure. But what you could do is when you put down your marker, you could put down a certain amount of money. So say if you wanted to put down 10, and then you could go into the future, and then that would be a multiple. Uh, so you would get 10 times... In this case, the multiple would be 9. The distance from there to there is 9 in terms of money. That would be um, 27 gold, which is quite a lot. So I don't know, maybe that's too much. But it would be it'd be a, a fun way to do it. Or what you could do is if someone 
if you put the marker on there and you put some money in there, maybe if someone tampered with this thing, you would lose all of the money. So then it wouldn't necessarily be so good to uh, put a lot of money down. But I'm not going to change that rule right now. I'm just going to keep with, with the regular antiquing. So she pulled in nine bucks. And our people have moved through time. Um, Oblo, he tried to, to check out, um, he got fooled by another card. It was another card there he didn't need. He only got a three as his roll though, so he wasn't gonna move very far anyway, but he ended up just going one space. Um, what else happened? Oh, Desi went way up here. He put down a, an antique marker. He got an antique from 1957, um, the year the Sputnik launched. Sorry, time machine. Oh, keeps falling. This is not a very good figure. Uh, I mean, he's he's handsome and all, but he falls down a lot. Um, and let's see what else happened. We already talked about the antiquing. Um, oh, Nun got something. Nun got Crandall's lightweight tricycle. Uh, she put it down there and then she went and picked it up. So there we go. I used to have a tricycle like this. Uh, they're nice. They're nice, you don't have to worry about falling over, but they're kind of slow and hard to pedal. Well, not hard to pedal, but they take more work than a bicycle anyway. Oh, he's waving at me. He he put down a patch. That's that's TD. He put down a patch and got another turn, and then moved back here, and he picked up something too. Shady's early warning lenses. Now, that's not such a huge upgrade for him. He did have the space helmet, but he's been hurt before by Desi, if you recall, and so to have that one little bit of extra defense uh, is nice for him, which is why he picked up Shady's early warning lenses. Good news, we will get to move the time mechanic, and he gets to move seven, but he's not going to move seven, he's just going to move one, two, three, right here to none, because she is now the middle point uh, in terms of all the people. People have been moving through time. Um, these two here, Desi and DJ Double J, they went shopping in the future. Um, DJ Double J, she bought some coffee, some Sumatran coffee. That's going to be her, her shield. Um, she's very frugal. She could have gotten something bigger with her power, but she's seeing that you want to kind of balance out uh, all of your different upgrades, otherwise you could be in some trouble. And she liked the idea of using coffee as a shield. Uh, Desi, he picked up, um, what did he pick up? Oh yeah, all he got was just a bump up in power, which was necessary for him. He wanted to keep his steam locomotive, he liked going fast. Uh, the locomotive plus the, the revolver, that used up all his power. So now he has room for a two, um, a two shield, which there happens to be one in the junkyard that he's aware of there, that space helmet. So he's going to be able to fit himself out and have his time machine ready to go, which means all he needs to do is get the timeline uh, to be um, his timeline, and then he can try and win the game. Oblio is in that case, in that situation right now. He he did a blind draw and got shoes, comfortable hat. So his blind drawing finally pulled uh, paid off for him. He has a, a fully upgraded time machine. There's no one back there to mess with him. If his timeline, uh, if he can fix it in the past before anyone else gets back there, if if you know he doesn't have to go in the future which you would think maybe he needs to be in the past because he's been in the past throughout the whole game I actually can't remember right now what his ID is um, he can win the game without anyone messing with him um, none she also got something what is no she didn't get anything she went and looked at something didn't get anything and TD he got a dollar
Let's move our mechanic. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, oh, wait, these are, you skip over the paradox ones. I forgot. One, two, three, four. You can land there. Five, six, seven. Oh, he's in the midpoint with TD. I bet they have a lot to talk about. So how the movement over paradox works is you can have it cost you nothing. I thought that would be an interesting way to um, let you be a little more strategic with your movement since it's a roll and move. You can try to uh, create paradoxes the direction you want to go. I guess if you're going forward in time in order to let you go there quicker. Um, yeah, I don't know how much you'd actually do that in practice, but it's something else that um, makes the game more interesting, and I don't think it makes it too much more complicated because it's easy to remember. Um, I'm also saying that you know if, if something's paradoxed and you're supposed to put an item down in that year, you put it in the next year. It counts as like a null year. There are only four cards left in our patch deck. Um, only the two people in the future are able to take it that time. Um, so I think if, if it gets to be a patch draft and no one can take any, it, people are going to have to start forgetting uh, some of their ideas. DJ Double J did two interesting things on her turn. First thing she did was she um, she did conspiracy research, and that's interesting mainly because that's a new action that we haven't used yet. What conspiracy research does is it lets you um, look at someone's hand, uh, basically, and that's uh, maybe it's not that interesting, but it's 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 something you, you didn't know was in this game, um, and it's on my my little messy printout here. Conspiracy research, so. There you go. Then she also um, made Hillary Clinton president. No, 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 it's not Hillary Clinton. It's Palin, which is hilarious. Uh, she made Palin president, um, which I think she finds funny. And the last of our items has been drawn. They're all out on the board or on people's places, people's time machines. There's going to be no more placement of items. That's interesting, actually, that that's hap that that depletion is happening about the same time that the depletion of this deck is happening. Of course, in a, in a game with less people, that wouldn't be the case. But in a five-player game, that seems to be the case. That's going to do it for this time. I know you may not know it because you don't know people's secret IDs. Maybe I should let you know next time what they are. Uh, if you're watching this, you can, you, can, you can comment and let me know if you would prefer to know. Um, and then I might just tell you. Uh, but you don't know their secret IDs. I will say, regardless of that, that people are getting close. The game could end very quickly. It could end next time. I say that oftentimes in games, however, and it, they surprise me in how long they can end up going. Um, this one, it could go a lot of different ways. We have a number of people who are close, however, and, and some some of them are obviously close, like Desi there. He has um, four upgrades, as does um, Oblio. None is close to four upgrades. You know, there are a lot of people very close. Desi, by the way, that that um, that upgrade there needs to be repaired by the time mechanic. So we might get to see the time mechanic get into action next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Zytel Leg 2, U.S. Patent Number 1 plus Chrononauts, the first United States of American Chrononaut.